Welcome to Just Relationships, the show that offers you concrete ways to make your relationships better. Whether it's your boss, your spouse, your children, or your friends, the quality of your relationships in life directly affects how you feel about yourself and the success you achieve. Your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer, a psychotherapist, telecoach, author, and seminar leader, will interview top experts to help you learn to manage this essential part of your life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Duffy Spencer. Greetings to you. Is intimacy scary for you? Do you want intimacy in your life and yet can't seem to find a healthy, happy relationship for any length of time? Do you find that sometimes you have sabotaged your relationships out of fear of intimacy? Well, we all need intimacy and most of us, many of us have a uh, ambivalence about it. We want it and we're scared of it. If you are interested in intimacy, like like human beings are interested in food and water and air, stay tuned because I'm very happy to introduce my guest to you, Dr. Sally ba- Valentine. Yes, it really is Valentine, who is an expert on relationship therapy, certified sex therapy, hypnotherapy, imago therapy, gestalt therapy, etc., etc., etc. Welcome, Dr. Valentine. Oh, thank you, Daffy. I'm glad to be, uh, Dr. Daffy, um, glad to be on this show. And, uh, and uh, however, you know, we can share what we know around intimacy would be great. Great. Well, I'll let you start. And I just I just have to say, Sally, that <laughs> Sally Dr. Sally Valentine, your name is on purpose. You were born with this name? And actually that's my um my married name. That's your married and, name. Yeah. I, I'm no longer married, but I kept the name. I, I think that was mm-hmm. very wise, Dr. <laughs> Sally Valentine. And just and the fact that you are not only a sex therapist, but that you give regular tantric sex se- uh, seminars, retreats for couples, which yes. I attended. So I can say virtually for sure uh, how positive uh, they are how filled with love and sensuality as well as sexuality. And no, it's not about taking off our clothes in public. Um, It's about just sharing uh, with your partner for the most part, kind of like picnic style. You had us bring blankets and we all each in this large conference room had our own blanket and our own set of uh, ways of, of behaving with each other, plus a lot of sharing. I met such wonderful people there um, in your in your retreat, Dr. Sally Valentine. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what, what would you say would be some ways that people um, have trouble with intimacy? How do you counsel people who are having relationship problems? Well, you know, um, I think it's it's usually pretty individual, but I, I would say that um, oftentimes I will see couples that come in and um, they're having difficulty in their relationship as a whole, but um, one of their major complaints is uh, the lack of intimacy or the, the just the waning of their intimacy. And um, first, I like to really find out uh, what they mean by intimacy, because a lot of people throw in everything into that word. Um, it's sex, it's lack of connection, or it could be just sex. And like we're okay in all these other areas, it's just sex. But when they say intimacy, I really need to kind of understand what they mean by intimacy so I can know where we're where we're going, or at least where to start. But what's very interesting, you mentioned about the Tantra workshops. Um, <clears throat> in the very beginning of the Tantra workshops, one of the things I do is I, I go around and just a way of introducing everyone that's in the workshop, and I ask them what their intentions are for that for the workshop. Like, what do you hope you get out of the weekend? And, and um, almost everyone tells me, uh, you know what, we really want to improve or enhance our intimacy. We want to know other ways of really connecting. And um, it is so very interesting, uh, the numbers of years I've done this, that 
I really find most couples that attend really come to want to learn how to connect in a deeper way, in a more deeper and more intimate and more connected way. Yes. So, um, so when couples come and they're having problems around that area, um, I do like to find out uh, where they are and what what is going on for them in that moment in time, and what have they done in the past to try to improve it. And uh, you know, when did it start? And has it always been this way? And you, surely you wouldn't have gotten together if it was like this in the beginning. Yes. And you know, kind of finding out what it is that has been going on for a couple's life that would uh, impact their level of intimacy or their lack of intimacy. So, Dr. Valentine, you and I met at an Imago conference, uh-huh. and I my sense is that so many people don't know, right? They don't know how they sabotage themselves, their relationships, that couples are always projecting all kinds of things onto each other. I will project my, I worked with a couple today that um, the husband was projecting his very stern, punitive father onto his wife, who was not at all stern and punitive. She did get angry at times. Mm -hmm. And that felt to him when she even used a sharp tone that is as if he was being hit by a, a belt, uh, with a right. belt by his father, which is what actually happened. Mm-hmm. And he's so terrified of her getting angry with him that he winds up lying to her. And then this causes her to distrust him greatly. Right. So it's a terrible cycle. Yet, I don't know if the couple would have come to that on their own without um, someone, a professional, helping them. I agree. It's not the kind of thing most people are thinking about when they get in arguments or when they're really falling uh, further away from each other. Most couples don't have that um, that line of thinking to even, you know, Mm. <laughs> wonder, gee, you know, you're acting just like my mother and my father, and you know, and no wonder most people don't have that organic insight. It, you know, I do think it does help when people come into counseling or to talk to someone else that can mirror a little bit of what they're witnessing to help people kind of uh, notice these kinds of things. Yes, yes, yeah. and right. yeah, and. I, I I think that everyone uh, should get therapy. <laughs> I think every individual should have therapy. I think every couple should have therapy. I mean, even such basic things as looking at the stages of relationship that you and I talk about as a mago therapist, you know, the the honeymoon stage and the power struggle stage, and then the getting to the us place where we're we're allies, we're lovers and allies for life, very trusting to each other. Um, And so when people leave the honeymoon stage and they move into the power struggle stage after they've made an official commitment to each other, people are shocked and, you know, you're not the person I married and what's wrong with you and there must be something wrong with me and and people go on and on and and they, they really don't even know what's going on within themselves and each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is confusing for sure. Yes, with them and and with their partners, and they're not they aren't usually aware. You know, one of the things that um, I I'm pretty sure you probably do this too. It's a Imago, uh technique that we learned early on in our training. But the thing that I find, and this is the truth for everybody, this is like almost across the board. I think of couples on a daily basis, just acknowledged each other, um, appreciated each other, I think most couples would um, have been able to build up enough positivity between each other that when negative cycles happen, when stuff happens in life that affects them, um, that you know, they built up this, this safety net of um, uh, positivity, appreciating each other, and that little kind of checking with each other on a regular basis, making eye contact, breathing together, and just uh, appreciating something about their partners every single day. Yes, uh, I, I think that is 
just what soothes the soul and keeps people connected in mm. spite of everything else that happens in life. Yes, I, I just want to underscore that, Dr. Valentine, because um, it's it's so easy to look at what we don't like and the brain has a has a negativity bias, and so we we have that wired into our brains to prevent us from from dying. Um, so we have to remember danger, and we, you know, it's typical. We we take the good stuff for granted, part of the humdrum every day, but to voice literally consciously, a voice one one thing a day. But make it every day and keep it simple, one thing, and keep it specific and absolutely sincere. And just, I agree, it it changes the the, the hormones in the body, it increases the endorphins, and it's wonderful. And I think that's, that's one reason my husband and I got so much out of your retreat, because you had us doing that all the time. And uh and it was it was we you know we appreciate each other but it was like it was like mega doses of appreciation uh-huh. and and dopamine you know all the the great hormones come up in our bodies when we feel that way when we hear that kind of thing and that's right and um one of the tantra practices that um we do a lot during those weekends is the eye gazing yes <laughs> so i the, wanted to ask you about that yeah, yeah. yeah. So the eye gazing is uh, is um, a, a little bit more concentrated than just eye contact. Eye contact is great. That is a great beginning. And when we're gazing into each other's eyes, we're just really softening our face and our eyes and just allowing ourselves to uh, to see our partner and to be seen by our partner. And um, I think that that. Uh, comment about the eyes, you know, at the have, are the windows of the soul are so true. When when we are gazing into our partner's eyes, we really do uh, and allow ourselves to feel very, very connected, and it really helps uh, energetically connect two people, and really even the attunement uh, between two people uh, kicks into uh, gear as well. And it really yeah. you know, increases that. Husband, it helps decrease anxiety for most people. Some people actually increases their anxiety to look into each other's eyes so much. But um, that, well, I deal with that on a person-to-person basis. But mm-hmm. uh, typically, it really helps people um, calm down when they're gazing into their partner's eyes. And, um, you know, it really kind of bubbles up a lot of different kinds of emotions. Sometimes it's just joy and connection. Sometimes it can be sadness, depending on what kind of bumble, bubbles up. Mm. Uh, sometimes people feel a longing, and when they feel that connection with their partner and they haven't had that in a while, uh, they they become more aware of what they had been missing. Mm-hmm. And, and so it really brings, again, this sense of feeling reconnected, uh, you know, brought in together with my partner. So that, and that's a beautiful yeah. practice. And that, that, that I would love for people to do every day. I think that is, if you are with a partner, to be able to do that on a regular basis. Right. Um, and, and what may seem like a really long time doesn't have to be a very long time. You know, we always use the term eye contact, but eye gazing, it is really lovely. And I'm, I'm proud to say that my husband and I can do it without uh, awkwardness. Uh-huh. And... Um, it is it is really lovely and and when you think about just looking at someone 30 seconds is a very long time or a minute and we when we think about how many minutes go by that are that are wasted or lost or just speed by if you think you don't have time to eye eye gaze guess what you have 30 seconds to mm-hmm. really look into your partner's eyes and and the other thing that I found interesting was that you asked us to eye gaze with the various participants in the in the seminar, and um, that was a little awkward after a while. Um, but it wasn't as awkward as I would have thought. 
And it was really a way of seeing people. It was a very interesting way to meet people that I've never met before. And you had us bonding so much in two days. 